And welcome inside the backstage pass here for a Tuesday. Hard to believe it was uh, Easter came and gone. Another one, man. It's amazing how these shows continue to fly by. And don't forget this week, uh, Miss Jeannie Seeley is coming up here on Thursday. Grand Ole Opry Royalty. And, of course, uh, next week, Bonnie Tyler coming on the backstage pass. Pleased to welcome her in, myself, and, of course, uh, the entire team. Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, Nick Canizales. And pleased to welcome in here Nashville recording artist here on the backstage pass. Show favorite, Ken Wilbur the show let's say ken how we doing we're good man just excited to have you here and talk about the latest single bread on the table and of course uh if i was a house and a whole bunch of other cool stuff that we got to catch up on so i guess here at the top let's talk about uh the blur that was 2020 and all the different uh changing of the guard if you will um because a lot of hit <laughs> the music industry hard of all industries out there and everybody was affected how did you find yourself keeping busy what did you kind of uh I guess go to. Some people say it was food. Some people say it was writing songs. I don't know. I've had a lot of different answers here on the program. Uh, watching TV. Uh, how did you keep yourself busy? And how did it really affect you when, when the live show was uh, was kind of affected out there? Well, uh, you know, for starters, I'm out out in New York, and mm -hmm. New York is uh, definitely one of the more stricter states with the lockdowns and stuff. So the whole music scene is just completely collapsed here in, uh, in New York. It's starting to come back now, thank God. But you know, for about the better part of the last year, it's it's been pretty rough doing live shows and whatnot. But I was very fortunate in that when we were uh, working on the upcoming album, which will be out in a few months here, uh, entitled "Ran Out of Sky." Um, we were we were down in Nashville and we were able to actually get the main instrumental tracks and everything cut before the pandemic hit. And then when I came back down to cut vocals, um, you know, the pandemic was kind of in full swing, but it was a very small group of us. And uh, we were able to do that. I, I actually was able to come down uh, to Nashville around June, uh, filmed an episode of uh, Jimmy Bowen and Friends. And uh, at that point, we uh, we were able to finish up the record. So I got all my vocals done and everything. So we, we have a 20 track album coming out here very shortly that was all recorded during 2021. So we're very fortunate we were able to do that. The timing just worked out well. Yeah, I'd say like not very many people got to be in that position, but it sounds like your timeline worked with the world's timeline. It worked <laughs> it, out. It was luck, but we're thankful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I Many love that tracks. too. That's, that's a lot of tracks. Did you guys kind of have that in mind that we're going to do this this big project, or was it kind of just like I know sometimes people say, "Well, we're not sure about this song. We're going to put this one out as a, a single, then look at this other full length album at a later time. We're going to kind of tease the audience with this." I mean, how did you guys kind of go about? Because I'm sure you had a lot of songs that were just written or in the can, that kind of thing. How did you go about picking songs for this this big deluxe? I'll call it a deluxe because that's twenty songs. I think that's <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's a big one, if you will. Um, <laughs> What ended up happening was uh, we had recorded um, several tracks, some of which have already been released as singles, but we never did a, a physical product on on anything um, after my first album, uh, Rolling My Own. So kind of when we got all done, we'd, we'd gone in the studio and we found out like, man, we got a lot of material here and just decided that, well, the stuff we've already released as singles, we're just going to put on the album as well. Um, you know, that way it's now available for those folks who want a physical product on it. We're going to be doing a, a CD and a vinyl press. I'm very excited about the vinyl press, by the way, because I'm, I'm a huge vinyl guy, major record collector. So uh, mm -hmm. that's that's for me, my first uh, vinyl press. I love that. I often, Brandon asks artists and he asks them, what do, what do you think about this vinyl movement that, that is coming along? And you, you answered that. You're getting vinyl and that will be available too. So how many, how many vinyls is that to fit that many songs? <laughs> Uh, well, it's going to be a double LP, so uh, we're we're going to have uh, five songs per side, four sides, twenty tracks. Wow, mm -hmm. cool, mm. awesome! You may have to definitely uh, definitely hook us up with something there because I collect stacks of them, and I'm like, yeah, if I go to a record store, I'm looking for some cool stuff there to kind of get my hands or at least digging into because uh, <laughs> I cover I cover the old classics, man. I love that '80s '90s sound. People that know me know I love that sound out there when it comes to the. Uh, different uh, great classics of country music, traditionally, if you will. We've had a lot of the great artists here uh, on the program. Just recently, Tracy Lawrence had stopped by and they were talking about uh, some of those great songs of the 90s. So I take in, I guess we're ready to hear some music here on the show. And uh, is that guitar close by? Because I think we got to play a couple here. Well, as a matter of fact, it is. Um, <laughs> we, uh, 
our current single we got out to radio right now is a, is a little number called Freedom Song, so we'll do you a little bit of that bad boy. All okay, right. here we go. Great. Yes. All right, here we go. Staring back at me. I ain't the man I used to see. I've been in the line a long time. I need a change. Breaking my back, working double shifts. The weight of the world is getting hard to lift. I'm starting to think I need to break a link in this chain. But something's got to give. This ain't the way to live. Put me on a highway, the interstate, the third road, to any place. As long as I'm alone, gone, chasing down some blue skies in my old truck. To the world, I'll turn the radio up and sing along to this freedom song. Woman and she understands every now and then her old man needs downtown to clear his mind and love. This time tomorrow you can see my face. There'll be one less rat running in this race. I'll be soothing my soul with a fishing pole. That's what I love. So put me on a highway, the interstate, the dirt road, the any place. As long as I'm alone, gone, chasing down some blue skies in my old truck. To the world, I'll turn the radio up and sing along. Sing along. Sing along to this freedom song. Put me on a highway, the interstate, the dirt and road, the any place. As long as I'm alone, gone, chasing down some blue skies in my old truck. To the world, I'll turn the radio up and sing along. To this freedom song. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Yeah, boy, if you ride in your truck, you can definitely crack that one up there. Freedom Song from Nashville recording artist uh, Ken Wilbur here on the Backstage Pass with Kirsty Kraus and uh, Brandon Morell. Our thanks to uh, Peyton Howie for joining us, kicking off the shows for Tuesday. Don't forget tonight at 6 Central, uh, myself, Zach Stone, Mike Babo, and Greg Lucas, formerly of the Astros and the Texas Rangers. We're going to have the Pitch Baseball Podcast from 6 to 7, talking anything and everything baseball with some good conversation uh, with some great guys. Kick back, drink some whiskey, and have a good time. No doubt about that. Uh, and we actually play some Freedom Song. That'd be kind of cool to lead off the baseball show. A little oh Freedom my gosh, Song. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, good there. that is <laughs> such an anthem song. It is. Like, it, it immediately, you are in it, you're feeling it, you're like right there next to you, holding your beer up, like just jamming out. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. Talk to us how you feel when you're performing it, what the response has been. Obviously, it's it's great. The people are streaming it. But, uh, yeah, just talk to us about when you first heard that song, how you knew you had to cut it, the whole thing. Well, the first time I heard the song, uh, my producer, Sonny Lemaire from Exile fame, had, uh, had sent me a whole bunch of material that he had written, and this was one of them that he had kind of suggested to me. And the minute I heard it, I knew I wanted to do it. Uh, I've always been a fan of Southern rock music. Uh, I grew up cut my teeth with, you know, Leonard Skinner and the Charlie Daniels band, Marshall Tucker, Allman Brothers, all that good stuff. You know, even a little grinder switch every now and then. So for a real throwback for those uh, <laughs> Southern rock fans. 
And, uh, you know, so I knew I wanted to do the tune and uh, we went ahead and cut it and uh, we were actually mixing the tune and uh, Sonny had uh, mentioned to me that this song had actually been done. And uh, so my version is actually a cover. It was recorded by a band by the name of Blackberry Smoke, who yeah. at the time I had never heard of. And, uh, you know, naturally when uh, somebody cuts a song that, I, that I'm going to do or, you know, I'm like, man, I got to I got to listen to their other stuff because obviously we have musical, you know, similar musical tastes. And I went out to Grammys in Nashville and ended up picking up several uh, Blackberry Smoke albums. And uh, now I'm a huge fan. Um, so <laughs> we're uh, we're happy to put this song out. Uh, I love it. I love the feel of it. It just kind of makes you want to step on the gas and, you know, get a speeding mm -hmm. ticket. <laughs> Those songs are always great. That's <laughs> awesome. And shout out to Grimey's. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's good. Love that. Story. Yep. And that's, it makes, that's what I was thinking too. Ken is like step on the gas and just get that speeding ticket. Oops. I ran a red light, but I'm jamming in my truck and you know, just having a good time and go get to my destination. No doubt. So uh, yeah, it's funny. It's on my playlist. A lot of things are on my playlist now. It's crazy how I, I actually kept that one on since we that's last talked. You're bringing all these amazing artists yeah. on the show. That's your playlist just keeps getting bigger. That's what's happening. Yeah. My, I was joking with somebody the other day, my Google drive, you ought to see, man, I've got like maybe 10% left of like what, what's on there. Cause like it saves all the songs. So somebody sends you MP3s, automatically go to your Google Drive and your iTunes account. And I'm like, yeah, there's over a thousand songs on my playlist now. It's it's uh wow. I'm gonna say it's crazy. Uh but most people have that that problem too, which is a good problem to have too. Hey, Absolutely. let's take a couple steps back here and, and two step this a little bit. Uh rolling my own. I go back to this one because uh this was the uh, full length album that I fell in love with and you know where I'm going with this. The one that uh caught my attention. I love it. The tractor song. Let's let's get the story behind this one too because uh what are your, your best ones out there that I like from 2017? Uh, let's get the lowdown on the album. Tell me how much fun it was to work on that and the specific track for that one. Well, uh, the the album itself was was an absolute blast, and and I owe everything that I got going on now with with working in Nashville with Sonny Lemare and you know Tony mm -hmm. Cotter, you know Jimmy Bowen, and all these great folks. I owe all of that to my first record, Rolling My Own. Uh, if it weren't for that, I, I probably wouldn't have even been on their radar. But uh, we recorded that album here in uh, upstate New York um, with some friends that I met doing theater. Um, and a gentleman by the name of Michael Brothers had a studio and he heard that I was working on an album. He said, hey, why don't you uh, come on into my studio and we'll, we'll, we'll do this record. So we, we brought the album in there and uh, and that was how it you know eventually happened. Hired uh, local musicians and everything uh, from, from upstate New York. It, it was a real blast. I mean, to be honest, it was a, re a real learning process for me because you know it was the first album I'd ever done. I produced it myself. I wrote most of the material, co-wrote it with a, a good buddy of mine, uh, Kerry Fallett, and also uh, Cameron Kinnear. Uh, but we really, you know, we were we were flying by the seat of our pants. We didn't we didn't know what the heck we were doing, so we were learning as we went, and uh, so it, it was a lot of fun. But it was a lot of trial and error there. And uh, I was working for the the Delaware County Sheriff's Office at the time, and uh, you know was kind of in between shifts working for them uh, doing uh, corrections and you know trying to squeeze in all the the studio stuff. So it, it thank God for that project. I'm so proud of it, uh, and I learned mm -hmm. so much. I felt like I grew so much as an artist from it. So, you know, I definitely encourage people to check it out. It, it's a lot of fun. There's some good tunes on there. And as far as the the tractor song, um, you know, we were kind of uh, looking for a, an up-tempo number that we wanted to throw in there and, you know, good old drinking song or whatever. And mm -hmm. I'm a huge George Jones fan. And, uh, you know, obviously there's that famous uh, story about George Jones driving his John Deere tractor to the bar. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> that was kind of the inspiration for uh, for that number. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Pulling from the greats. It really does sound like you, for a while, were living like a full-time double life, you know, doing the corrections, doing the music, doing your first record, and being, but you were still very true to your sound. And that says a lot about you as an artist and knowing how you want to sound and how you want to, you know, express yourself. And uh, that feel good and all the lyrics just feel good when you listen to it. A song that really stuck out to me was I Could Get Used to You. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about that song a little bit and, and how it came about and yeah, the, the life, the life of that song. 
Well, absolutely. Uh, so I Could Get Used to You is actually a cover song. It was uh, originally done by Exile in the 80s. They uh, mm-hmm. they had a number one record on it. Uh, it was written by my producer, uh, Sonny Lemaire, and also uh, Exile frontman and guitar player, J.P. Pennington. Uh, great song. So what ended up happening was, this is my wife Amanda's favorite Exile song. Aww. And we kind of was, I pulled him aside, you know, when we were figuring out what we wanted to do for the project. And I said, Sonny, man, I, my wife loves the song and I really would love to do a cover of it. But um, you guys, you know, without a doubt, have the definitive version on it. So I kind of want to do something different with it. So, you know, maybe we could put our heads together and try to, you know, change it up a little bit. So uh, Sonny actually had played with a group uh, called Selby Mills Lemaire and they, they put out a pretty, pretty good record um as that group um and it's one of the side projects from exile and he, he kind of said to me he's like hey you know uh we used to do this sometimes uh just for fun as, as like a reggae number you know so if you want to play around with it you know, uh, you know we'd love to I, I hope your wife is okay with that <laughs> and uh, you know i was like well i i hope jp's all right with that you know i mean this is you know one of his babies i wouldn't want to you know upset him by changing his song all up but uh as it turned out, um, you know, my wife loved it. JP loved it. And uh, we all had a blast playing it. So it, it's a it's a great song and it's a lot of fun. I'm all proud of it. Awesome. You also had a couple of more back to um, Rolling My Own, which is really just uh, a lot of good stuff on there, too. A lot of good storytelling, a lot of good songs to connect with. A lot of people there. Uh, Another Night Without You was uh, one that caught my attention. Let's kind of go there and, and break that one down a little bit because I still love that song. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. So, uh, you know, I, I wrote that song. Um, I kind of wrote it with a with a, a bit of a Toby Keith vibe to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I just was looking for an up-tempo, you know, uh, country love song. And, and that was, was kind of what come out, you know, one night, you know, over a couple of glasses of Woodford Reserve, you know, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I see how those songs do come to life. Well, I'm ready for some more. Uh, music here from the great Ken Wilbur here on the backstage pass. And uh, I say, Ken, dealer's choice. <laughs> yes, well, all right. This is my choice. And we, uh, we've we been talking a little bit about uh, rolling my own. I'm going to I'm gonna throw right. it back a little bit. We're going to do a little number uh, that I wrote with uh, Carrie Fallett, a song called Throw Me a Bone. Nice. Okay, here we go. Awesome. It's been so long since I've been out at night. I've been on a short leash and that ain't right. It's getting old to staying home. I'm in my cage, I got my collar on. I've been good. Won't you throw me a bone? Laying on the porch watching cars go by. I ain't bit the mailman's leg in a long, long time. It's getting old to stay in home. I'm in my cage, I got my collar on. I've been good. Won't you throw me a bone? I wanna howl at the moon. Bark at the lights, chase that squirrel that keeps me up at night. I want to root through your flowers and understand just what's in that garbage can. It's getting old to stay at home. I'm in my cage, I got my collar on. I've been good, won't you throw me a bone? I bring you the morning paper every day. I bet you your slippers every time you say I'm so depressed, it's making me sick. I'm so damn tired of a bitch and that stick. I've been good. 
Won't you throw me a ball? I want to howl at the moon, bark at the lights, chase that squirrel that keeps me up at night. I want to root through your flowers and understand just what's in that garbage can. It's getting old, just staying home. I'm in my cage, I got my collar on. I've been good. Won't you throw me a ball? I've been good. Baby, throw me a ball. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. That is absolutely fantastic. I just saved Throw Me a Bone on Spotify by Ken Wilbers, rolling my own. <laughs> Love it. That is a shout out from our sponsor, Bangtel Whiskey. And you can get yourself a bottle right online and bring it right to your doorstep or on the app. What is the app mm -hmm. called again? Easy Liquor. Easy, Easy Liquor, liquor. App. There you go. And of course, presented here by Tour Guitars. We are so happy to have you today. Ken, thank you for being on the Backstage Pass and performing that song. Love That's that. a good one. That is a feel good. <laughs> like you. you, we were texting back and forth. We were talking about how it's like, <laughs> it's like dance music. You know, you want yep. to get up and yep. I know some two-step moves. I just learned the hip dip. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to try that out as you, you know, at your live performance. All right, well, you're doing better than me. That's why I always played in the band because, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> not much of a dancer. <laughs> dance hall music, no doubt. I love that when it comes to just, uh, like you said, just good old dancing. If you don't like, uh, you don't like that, you don't like country music when it comes down yeah, to the absolutely. old stuff, man, because that's that's uh, about as good as the 90s sound as it gets right there. So when you guys put it all together, I mean, there's so much great stuff. I can talk about that album all day. Uh, can you hear me now? It's another one off there that really uh, I liked a lot too. And of course, uh, Amanda's song, When She Dreams, is another uh, fantastic piece of work. That whole thing is just uh, really good. So there's something for everybody. Um, I guess let, let's kind of start back with uh, Can You Hear Me Now? That's just another one that is just good old country music right there, too. And then we'll kind of go to Amanda's song, uh, When She Dreams. I love that one, too, Ken. <laughs> All right, uh, Can You Hear Me Now was actually written by uh, my former guitar player uh, by the name of Kerry Fallot. He's a good buddy of mine, a uh, heck of a songwriter, heck of a guy. And, uh, you know, he, he pitched a song to me when we were uh, kind of co-writing some stuff for the, for the record, and I instantly loved it. Once again, it has that Southern rock feel to it. And uh, it was very fortunate that I got to bring in uh, a guitar player by the name of Rich Rogers, who uh, I had played in a band with uh, called JD Mistress back in the day. And uh, he's just a phenomenal guitar player. And uh, then we brought in another gentleman uh, uh, by the name of Nate Gross. And uh, he's another phenomenal guitar player. And the two of them kind of got to jam out back and forth. Um, unfortunately, we never got them in the same room at the same time, but boy, they played off each other really well. And uh, that that song really kind of shows my my Southern rock fluent influence, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we're awful proud of that one. Love that one too a lot. And then I tell you, uh, man, just as if, if it don't catch the attention of everything you put out there, um, just the the artwork on this and the song itself with uh, summertime thing because uh, I love that old classic car that you've done the photo work with and the song itself. And I know. That was a big uh, project for you guys, uh, 2019, I believe, when that came out. Uh, yes, sir. Let's, let's kind of run down a little bit of uh, summertime thing, the artwork, the album, kind of how you guys put all that together. I love that song, too. Well, uh, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of it now. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> At the time, when we, uh, when we cut the song, um, I was not a fan of it. I uh, did not care for the song. I don't know what it was specifically, but it just, it, I wasn't feeling it. It didn't, it didn't resonate with me. And uh, we had some leftover time in the studio and, and Sonny Lemaire said, Hey man, why don't you just do this summertime thing song? And I was like, Oh, you know, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. He's like, come on, man, do it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I conceded, we went in there and we did it. And uh, you know, I, literally 30 seconds after we finished cutting the song, I was glad that I did because, you know, I was able to tap into it. And then suddenly it's like the light bulb came on and I got it. And I, I was kind of the outlier. Everybody else was like, man, this is a great song for you. You should do this. And uh, <laughs> I'm so glad we did. Uh, the, the artwork for that was actually um, 
Oh, I'm trying to think of where the heck we did that. Um, we did it out past uh, Mount Juliet in uh, mm-hmm. Tennessee, and uh, <laughs> there's this great venue, and uh, unfortunately, the name of it escapes me. But they they got all kinds of goodies there, and they they had this old uh, this old truck, and we thought it was just kind of perfect for for that number. So uh, that's that's where the artwork came from. Uh, the photographs were taken by Bev Moser, who is uh, mm-hmm. my publicist, but also is uh, one heck of a, a photographer, and she she took those shots. Awesome. Great, great pictures there too and definitely uh i'm ready for some more music here kirsty i gotta hear another one because there's so many great uh great songs from ken wilbur out there across all the digital platforms go download them now or wherever you stream all the music out there spotify or you're like me you've got the apple music free plug there no, no pun intended but uh good stuff no doubt and uh ken let's let's do one final one before we go to some uh rapid fire here on the show well, all right. Uh, we're going to do another throwback. This is a song uh, that I wrote. And, uh, you know, forgive me if I bugger this one up because, man, it's been a while <laughs> since I played this one. But um, this is a song I actually wrote back when I was in high school. Uh, it's a song off of uh, the throw or the uh, <clears throat> role in my own record mm-hmm. called No Better Way. Can't remember my life without you. If I didn't have you, I don't know what I would do. And every memory I've tried to recall, you've been there with no thought at all. They say there's one special love that we were meant to find. I'm yours, and baby, you're mine. I never believed much in fairy tales, but when I look in your eyes, all rational thought fails. You got me living in some fantasy. But there ain't no place, girl, that I'd rather be. My feet haven't touched the ground in years. But I'm in love, and I love the way it feels. Riding around on a carnival ride, and I hope it never stops. We got love, and there ain't no better way. They say eternity's a long time to love. You got mine, I swear to the moon and stars above. They say that love can't transcend all time. But they haven't seen yours in my Riding around on a carnival ride, I hope it never stops. Our love is written in stone, we're all now we're the time. And though we may fall, Stumble along the way. We got love, and there ain't no better way. Oh, we got love, and there ain't no better way. Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. 
That's it. No better way right there from Ken Wilbur. Of course, off the album Rolling My Own out there. Of course, a lot of great music, uh, Freedom Song, and all kind of just uh, cool stuff out there. Love the sound and everything he's got going on there. New York country artist and Nashville recording mm -hmm. artist here. Back here with Kirsty coming up here at uh, 6 o'clock. Time does fly. we got the Pitch Baseball Podcast to finish out the night of Tuesday with myself, Zach Stone, Mike Babo out of San Antonio, and Greg Lucas, formerly with the Astros and the Texas Rangers. We'll talk about our Highs and lows of the first week of baseball. And, of course, a little bit of shout-out to those uh, Baylor Bears for winning the national championship last night, beating Gonzaga 86-70, to hometown Texas. Uh, anytime Texas team can does good, we got to definitely salute those Baylor Bears for uh, taking it out on that national championship last night, first one in uh, school history. Hey, one I wanted to ask you about before we get to a little rapid fire. Uh, bread on the table. Let's talk about this. Uh, around Thanksgiving, uh, it came out. Uh, let's talk about who you worked with on that project because another uh, – one of your best works out there. I love that song too. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is another uh, Sonny Lemare, J.P. Pennington uh, co-write. Um, they actually, uh, Exile did that uh, on an EP, uh, People Get Ready, which actually they've uh, just kind of re-released with, uh, with Time Life uh, Records. So it's pretty exciting there. Um, another song that Sonny pitched me, I'm, I'm a huge Exile fan. I have mm -hmm. loved him since I was, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> I, I grew up listening to them. So uh, that was a, a, a great song. I felt that it resonated, especially now during the pandemic when so many people were out of work and everything. And, you know, it's a good old country song. It's a throwback to the to the 90s uh, with the line dancing. And, you know, that, of course, that was, the, you know, the era where I really kind of cut my teeth was was in the 90s. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just a great song to get out on the dance floor and, you know, party down to. It's a lot Excellent. of fun. No the message, the message is, is so good. great, too. You know, like Absolutely. everybody's I feel like a lot of people are in that boat, especially after <laughs> a crazy year. And they're just trying to trying to pick up where we all you know left off and mm -hmm. and uh, making sure to maintain and, and having that kind of pressure. So I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Absolutely. Love it too. Rapid fire. Let's do it. And you're leading off okay. today. You're batting lead off. <laughs> All right. So being in New York and having a theater background, what mm -hmm. was your most favorite production that you ever were in and why? Well, I, I guess I would have to say my, my favorite production that I ever did was a production of the music man that, uh, that I did Ooh, with yeah. a small group uh, called the out of the woodwork players. And, it was my favorite for, you know, uh, you know I'm, a, I'm a little partial to that for, for personal reasons in that I actually met my wife, Amanda, doing that show. Uh, she played my uh, my uh, love interest in the show. Was that and, Ethel? And, Ethel Toffelmeyer? Uh, Madam, Madam Librarian. Madam uh, Librarian, okay. She, she was a librarian and... Uh, we we just kind of hit it off and uh, and you know we we've been together since uh since you know <laughs> it's been a long time we've, we've been celebrating our seventh year anniversary of marriage and it's wow. crazy. Congratulations! That's so cool that you guys met you know through through that production and and on set. That's that's awesome. <laughs> All right, kid. I got to ask you about this one too. Uh, what did you find yourself, or what have you been into lately for? Uh, the binge watching. What's been the, the TV series of are you getting into? Is it Yellowstone? You know, it's not. I actually, <laughs> that, that's that's on my list, man. I, I've yeah. been meaning to watch it because everybody's talking about it. I'm a huge Kevin Costner fan. I'm a huge Western fan, so that kind of lends itself to something I'd be into. But uh, right now, uh, my wife and I are we're watching The Blacklist pretty heavily, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we're also watching uh, Clarice, which is a relatively new show, but we're you know we're we're loving that one. Awesome. Okay, like that one too. Good stuff. All right, Ken. Well, if you had the opportunity to order pizza and it was just for you, you don't have to share with anybody. It's just going to be yours. What are you ordering? What's on the pizza? What are your toppings? Hmm. Well, you know, I'm 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 kind of a loaded up with meat guy, so I'm I'm probably doing uh, <laughs> pepperoni, sausage, extra cheese, and you know, if I'm feeling real froggy, maybe some uh, some meatball. There you go. Oh, wow. pepperoni, <laughs> sausage, and meatball. We haven't had that one before. <laughs> he would have to. Kid would have to slap my hand and get get out of there, man. Just for me, <laughs> that's the carnivore pizza I like too. And uh, when it comes down to it, no doubt. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna get one this weekend. You just talked me into it for. Uh, Thursday night, buddy of mine coming over, and that's what we're going to have. It actually comes from a Greek restaurant. People would think that a Greek restaurant could make 
uh, good pizza, but, but man, they do. I've got one here in, in uh, Texas that, that does that too. All right. So uh, when you get a chance, Ken, to kind of wind down, uh, we like whiskey here on this uh, show because it's very good. And of course they uh, pay us to say that too, which is a good thing, but also, and it is a good drink, Bangtail whiskey. What's your drink of choice to wind down? Well, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a bourbon guy, so I got to get my hands on some of this Bangtail whiskey because I, <laughs> I will be honest with you. I have not tried it before, but you, you know, you, you got me intrigued. I'm gonna, uh, right now my, my go-to is, uh, is Woodford reserve. Uh, I'm a big okay. fan of that. Mm-hmm. Like well, Bangtail's out of Florida, but you can, it, yeah. it can ship anywhere and it's, it's through the app, the easy app. So, uh, you'll easy have liquor. to try it. We're going to have to get your hands on it. At some point. <laughs> hey, 30 <laughs> bucks for like a 750 milliliter bottle can. That's a pretty good deal for a bottle of whiskey. That's a lot of whiskey in a bottle. You can't, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. No, you really can't too. Tell you what else you can't beat is the great music out there uh, across the Spotify and the digital platforms and Freedom Song and Bread on the Table and Tractor Song. And of course the album we talked about today, which is uh, fantastic. Rolling my own. He's rolling his own and, and paving his way out there in the country music business, working with some fantastic people of uh, Sonny Lemaire, uh, Marlon Harges, Exile the Band, and just a great, a great country group out there that uh, – and good friends of the podcast here on the Backstage Pass. Ken, appreciate the time as always, my friend. And uh, always come back here uh, when new singles and new projects come back. Thanks for the time and always uh, thinking of us too here on the show. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's been great as always. Yes. It's Congratulations always with Freedom Song. We love it. Yes. We love good it stuff. over here. <laughs> That's my rock. I'm going to play it tonight during the Pitch Baseball podcast coming up tonight with okay. uh, Zach Stone, Nashville recording artist. Of course, Greg Lucas, Mike Babo, 6 to 7 tonight, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I got to figure out what's what's coming up to Mark. Kirsty because it erases my memory, but I know this: Jeannie Seely stopping by on Thursday. We'll talk about the Grand Ole Opry, her new album, and a whole bunch more coming up here on the backstage pass. Thanks to Tour Guitars and Bangtail Whiskey. We'll talk to you guys tonight at six on the Pitch Baseball Podcast. See you soon.